Hello, I'm John Grabowski, a member of the history faculty at Case Western Reserve University and the historian for the Western Reserve Historical Society. I want to walk you through the history of several neighborhoods that surround University Circle in Cleveland, Ohio. These neighborhoods have seen the best of times and the worst of times. Once filled with homes and thriving businesses and industries, their streets today often looked unkempt and abandoned. The casual observer would consider them lost, but now, in the opening decade of the 21st century, there are indications that the decline can be stopped and, indeed, reversed. The latest change for the better can already be seen. More change can follow if the areas are provided with the tools to compete and survive in a new historical era. East Cleveland began its history as a farming community to the east of Cleveland. By the turn of the 20th century, it began to evolve into an upper-class and upper-middle-class residential area. One of its residents, albeit part-time, was John D. Rockefeller, whose Forest Hills estate was partly located in East Cleveland. By the 1940s, East Cleveland was one of the major inner ring suburbs surrounding Cleveland. But by the 1960s, out-migration, racial tension, and the general decline of the central city changed its fortunes. By the 1990s, it had one of the highest poverty rates in the United States. Yet, while many have continued to focus on East Cleveland's woes, some have begun to see it rising again. The East Cleveland Public Library is a major factor in that renaissance. Under the leadership of its director, Gregory Reese, it has secured millions of dollars for improvements, including a state-of-the-art theater, computer laboratories, and special health services linked to the Cleveland Clinic. The Buckeye Woodland neighborhood purportedly was once home to the second largest concentration of Hungarians in the world, second only to Budapest. Beginning in the 1880s, tens of thousands of Magyars and Slovaks made their homes near the industries that surrounded the railroad lines to its west. But by the 1960s, the factories that once provided the jobs to sustain the community began to close or move away. As the old industrial economy waned, local businesses closed. The children and grandchildren of the immigrant generation left. An area once anchored to industrial jobs withered, and those who moved into the area faced a new economic reality. While a taste of the old Hungarian community can still be found, Buckeye Woodland is now primarily African American. But if one looks closely, particularly at the areas that border Shaker Square, one can see a new era beginning, an era epitomized by the antique shops, restaurants, and other amenities that are found in the areas, an era that is based on lifestyle rather than ethnicity or race. The Fairfax neighborhood was once Cleveland's version of Harlem. In the 1930s, nearly 95% of Cleveland's African-American population had to live within the confines of what was then known as Cedar Central. Cedar, the main drag of the community, boasted stores, funeral homes, and churches, as well as an entertainment district. Its nightclubs, such as the Cedar Gardens, hosted talents such as Art Tatum and attracted a mixed audience of African Americans and white residents from the Cleveland Heights and Shaker Heights areas. Much of that old Cedar is now gone, but its core institutions, its churches, remain. One need only visit Antioch Baptist Church to find an institution totally committed to the community, offering a variety of services based on its faith mission and the needs of that community. In the late 19th century, the area around Huff Avenue on the east side of Cleveland evolved into a fashionable residential neighborhood. Following World War II, Huff went through a rapid change. In 1950, 5% of its residents were non-white. 10 years later, 74% of the population was African American. Realty agencies fostered panic selling and landlords maximized profit by converting single-family homes into rooming houses and tenements. Many of the new residents arrived in Huff during a period of industrial decline, rising unemployment, severe overcrowding, and racial discrimination. On July 18, 1966, the Huff riots began and continued for six days. Four people were killed, more than 240 fires had been set, and the neighborhood acquired a new reputation. Few thought Huff had any future left after 1966. Yet it has entered the 21st century with signs of renewed vitality. It, like East Cleveland, Buckeye Woodland, and Fairfax, has potential for an entirely new history in the years to come, provided that each is equipped to compete in the information-based economy of the century, and therefore to mirror the success that can clearly be seen in University Circle, the neighborhood that serves as their anchor.